Hey, it's Greg. Today I'd like to talk about multiple cursors in Emacs. So what are multiple cursors? It allows you to edit multiple lines or multiple places in the buffer at the same time. So for example, if we're sitting on the word multiple and we activate multiple cursors, we can edit in multiple locations at the same time. That's what it is. Why? Because it comes up more often than you might think. So it's really quite useful. You might want to use this, any Emacs user that might benefit from a lightweight version of macros. For example, Tailwind is popular these days. And in Tailwind, you have utility classes on HTML elements that are repeated, that are duplicated. So you wouldn't want to have to edit all of those individually. So you can highlight uh, one of those, create multiple cursors, you want to change teal to blue, you do that. If you want to change medium to small, you do that. And so you can edit multiple lines at the same time. Here we're editing four lines, but you can edit eight lines, 50 lines. Uh, so it's really quite useful. A recent example, just a day or two ago, there was some data on a website. I wanted to extract it and put it in a spreadsheet. So of course I could copy the HTML, but there was 35 entries. Each entry had probably six lines of HTML associated with it, paragraphs, divs, spans, whatever. So I was able to, uh, because they were all similar, there were 35 similar patterns, create 35 cursors, edit one, change it into something that was a CSV format, and I had the whole thing done. So it, it comes up and it's really quite useful. All right, this was built by Magnar Sven and others. Uh, the original commit was back in 2012 in GitHub, and a bunch of people have contributed since then. So thanks to all of them for providing this. It's quite useful. Uh, documentation, their GitHub repo has good documentation on the functions and some tips. And you can see something similar in Emacs. If you do Control H, Capital P, multiple cursors, uh, this is the package. And there's several pages here that talks about the functions, tips and tricks. Um, so there's good documentation there. And Magnar also has done a couple of YouTube videos, no, at least one YouTube video in his Emacs Rocks series. And so we'll talk about some of the stuff that's in his demo. All right, I am going to, do I have KeyCast? They have it turned on. All right, so this is the demo portion. I am going to cover a couple of functions. I don't think you need a lot of functions. Just a couple are pretty handy, but there's a whole list of them, and so you can look at the functions and decide which ones you want to use. So um, I've got KeyCast turned on down here. I'm going to turn it on and off because when it's on, you can see the key presses and the commands they call, but you can't see the number of cursors that I have active which is kind of helpful. All right, this chunk down here, this or this is a snippet from my uh, Emacs init where I am uh, binding keys to functions. And so I'm binding these multiple cursor functions commands to uh, control meta something. So this first one is bound to control meta J, and this is the command that it's uh, associated with. So it's a DWIM command, which is do what I mean. So based on the context of where your point is, uh, it's going to try to predict what it is that you want to do and do the right thing. So for example, if this symbol, we wanted to put cursors on there, we could do control meta J. And it not only marks that symbol, but it puts a cursor on each one of those. And so you can, you've got those cursors and you can edit, I don't know what that is, eight lines all in one go. So if you don't mark something, you hit uh, act, you activate that command. Control, I've got it to control meta J. It marks the text and puts the cursor. You can also mark the text yourself like that, and it'll uh, mark that text. So this is, uh, you know, by itself, this one command might be enough because it's quite a nice command. If you, um, let's see, do I have the word multiple here? If you hit it one time, uh, let's turn our keycast mode off. You can see down here in the mode line, we've got two cursors active. 
those two. We hit it again. Now we've got seven active. We hit it again. Oh, I guess there's only seven in here. Um, anyway, you can hit it multiple times and it will look harder to find more matches. So it does, it's got some algorithm that's going to, on the first hit, it's going to try to pick what you want. You can maybe hit it again and you'll get more matches. So that's something to be aware of. All right, that's the first one. It's the do what I mean command. All right, let's talk about disabling cursors. So you probably saw me do this. Uh, let's let's uh, create some cursors on this again. And it's marking the text and creating a cursor. So you can use Control G to unmark the text, and then you still have the cursors, right? Um, or if you light them up and you want to get rid of the cursors, you can hit return and that will drop all of the cursors. So control G, let's do that again. You know, you've got the uh, text marked and so if you just start typing, it's going to overwrite uh, what you have. So if you just want the cursors, you can do control G, get rid of the mark. And now you've got the cursors and you can go change whatever you want. Because return uh, disables the cursor and doesn't insert a new line, you need something, if you wanted to put a new line, you need some way to do that. And there are a couple of functions, you, commands you can use. This is one. I've got this bound to control J I N. So we go back up here, create some cursors, control G to get rid of the mark. We go over here, control J I N inserts a new line, control J I N another new line. All right, so you can't use return because it's going to disable cursors, but you can use something else. And you want to use it with a key binding, not by typing meta x in the command name. All right, that's disabling cursors. The next one, the next uh, multiple cursor command is this one. <clears throat> if you've got a set of lines that are similar that you want to operate on similarly, you mark the text and you, I've got this bound to control meta c and you get cursors on each of those lines. And you notice I only mark the first two, it's going to give you three cursors. If you mark all three, you're going to get four cursors, which is probably not what you want. Uh, this one does not have to be at the end of the line. You can do it anywhere in the line. And you get cursors right there. All right, that's this one. The next couple down here are, you have to have a marked region first. And so Magnar also has created this expand region package which kind of goes hand in hand with the multiple cursors and this is useful for multiple cursors and other things you want to mark some some region so i have this bound to control meta l so you do that one time and that puts you in this expand region uh, function and it, and then you can let go of the control in meta and just try type an l i don't have my uh, key mode on let's do that again Control meta L, and I hit L again, just L, not, not uh, control meta L. And you can hit that multiple times, and it's going to keep growing that region. And then you can hit a hyphen or a dash, and it'll shrink the region. So L to expand the region, dash to shrink the region, and a zero to make the region go away, go back to the beginning. All right, so that allows you to mark regions and back to multiple cursors, this first one, you mark something and then go find all of the instances like what you marked. So let's mark this. And then I'm, I've got this bound to control meta slash, and it's going to go find that symbol, all the symbols in this buffer that match that. Let's go over here. If I mark that, control meta slash, so I've got all those cursors. All right, that's this one. These next two allow you to have a little more granularity. You mark something, and then you can go forward and mark, or backward and mark. So you're getting cursors on all of those. Uh, but if you don't want all of them, you want to skip something, that's what these two do. So let's do that again. Go here, highlight, go forward. We want to skip that, skip mark so we've got three cursors now instead of five cursors so 
So again, that gives you a little bit more granularity. Uh, this one marks consecutive lines. These allow you to pick. These allow you to skip. All right, so those are the basic functions that I wanted to talk about. Again, the documentation has a bunch. Um, we talked about disabling cursors. The next thing I wanted to talk about was inserting numbers. This comes up occasionally. You've got some number of lines. You want to put some line numbers there. You can activate the cursors. Control meta C. And at this point, you can do, I've got the, this bound to control meta Y. And you can uh, insert numbers. If you want to start with a number other than one, you do a uh, prefix argument. So control U one zero. That wasn't right. Let's do it again. Um, control U one zero and command meta Y. So that starts at ten. All right, that's how you insert numbers. Optionally, you can use this other command, which is uh, rectangle number lines. So you got an option there. It's, that's not a multiple cursor, multiple cursor command. All right, a couple more comments. If you, let's go back to this thing originally. If you uh, have a bunch of cursors, let's turn our key cast back on so we can count our cursors. You see down here we have two. And if we hit it again, now we have six. Hit it again, we have seven. All right, but we don't, how many we have on the screen? We've got five on the screen. You can do, uh, I've got this bound to control a single quote. And what it'll do is uh, hide lines that don't have cursors. So try to pull more lines onto the screen so that you can see everything. And right now we've got all seven on the screen. And that'll toggle. You can just hit that and go back and forth. So we're down here, that's this command. I've got a bound to control single quote. All right, the next thing is, Magnar in his demo mentions uh, web mode. So if you've got a file like this that's got HTML tags in it, you can use that control meta J, that do what I mean command, and it will light up all the instances of that tag and the buffer. So you could change divs to spans. Or if you wanted to change, if you wanted to change H2s to H3s, you could just do that. All right, that's that one. This one is uh, just a note that multiple cursors, if you've got multiple cursors active and you run a command, it's going to ask you, do you want to run it for all cursors or just once? And however you answer that, that's going to get stored in this file. So these commands are going to run for all cursors, and these are just going to run once. So it'll ask you, and then um, it'll store it in that file. So that's this one. All right, the last thing is this command from Emacs called just one space. Uh, this is from Magnar's demo. He does a thing here where he... Uh, moves pretty quick and he downcases and removes spaces and it's not clear in the demo how he removes those spaces. So I think it's with, I just want to point out, it's probably with something like this, just one space. And so let's just do this. Do we have our, uh, let's turn our key cast on. We're going to create the um, cursors, control G to get rid of the marked region, move out here. We're going to downcase with downcase word, and now we're stuck here. We want to remove that space between mandarin and oranges, but there is no space after melon and, or oranges. So if we were to do a delete, it's going to pull lines from below. We don't want that. So I think what he's doing is something like this, just one space. So I've got that bound to control J I space. I don't have my multiple cursors back. Let's do this again. Go down here, control J, get rid of the marked region, go over here, down case. I'm going to do control J, I space, and you can see on the second and third instance, it added a space because it's if there is no space, it's going to add one. If there's more than one, it's going to change it to one. 
So and then you can back up and boom, you got the spaces going. Okay, that's it. Uh, that's what I wanted to talk about. Um, again, multiple cursors in Emacs. I use it every day. It's quite useful. I hope that helps.